what's going on guys Dre here and welcome back to the channel yes my first official video here on YouTube and it's a camera comparison I mean I had to for those of you who are new hey my name is Dre Anthony and I mostly do tech videos here on YouTube so if this is something that you're into then please consider subscribing now as you can tell by the title i will be doing a camera comparison between two of canon's cameras cameras that i've personally owned and have been using for quite some time now so i figured it would be a good idea to put together a video for any one of you guys out there that might be interested in picking up one of these cameras now let me just quickly say i know this is not a fair comparison by any means as these cameras are really geared towards different consumers however I'm really here to show you guys the difference in image quality video quality and to give you my overall experience using these cameras also let me say quickly that this video will not be a super scientific a super detailed video I mean there are many videos out there for that in this video I'm trying to give you relevant practical information that will help you decide whether or not any of these cameras is right for you. Now to start off the comparison, let's just run through briefly of some of the key features and specs of these cameras. Let's start with the Canon T7i. Now the Canon T7i is one of Canon's more popular budget friendly APS-C size DSLR camera which was released back in February of 2017. It uses the EF mount system which allows users to use both Canon's EF and EFS range of lenses. It has an optical viewfinder, it has a swivel 3 inch touch LCD screen, has Canon's very renowned and reliable dual pixel autofocus, it has built in Wi-Fi with Bluetooth and NFC connectivity. It shoots HD 1080p videos of up to 60 frames per second. It has a built-in flash and one of the drawbacks to this is that it's not weatherproof. Now if we should look quickly on some of the key features and specs of the Canon EOS R. Now this camera is Canon's first full frame mirrorless system on the market which was released back in September of 2018. It uses Canon's new RF lens mount system. Also, it poses a OLED electronic viewfinder. It also uses a swivel touch LCD screen, just a shade bigger than the T7i coming in at 3.2 inches. Shoots HD 1080p videos at up to 60 frames per second, 720p videos at 120 frames per second with some limitations being that you lose autofocus while shooting 120 frames per second. It shoots 4K of up to 30 frames per second with limitations, being that there is a huge 1.7 times crop. Other features include Canon's enhanced dual pixel CMOS autofocus system, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, USB 3.1, with in-camera charging support via the USB-C port. It has a headphone port for checking audio and the camera is weather sealed. Now when purchasing a camera, I tend to look at five key factors to help me to decide whether or not that camera is right for me. These factors, not in any particular order, includes image quality, battery size, lens options, ease of use, and last but definitely not least, the price. Now let's look at the individual bodies of each of these cameras. Now when looking at the Canon T7i, it is somewhat smaller and also lighter than the EOS R, but it is also worth mentioning in this context that the EOS R is splash and dust resistant while the T7i isn't. The grip on both cameras feels great, which is pretty common with most Canon cameras, so it's really dependent on each individual to decide which feels best to them. For me, I would definitely give the edge to the Canon EOS R. Now, it's obvious when looking at both camera bodies, there are quite a few differences, with the T7i looking pretty much like most of Canon's other DSLR cameras, and the EOS R taking on a more modern look, which 
coincides with what we expect a mirrorless camera to look like. Now with its magnesium alloy body and magnesium shell, the finish is lovely, although somewhat prone to the seam scuffing as some other matte finish models. Feature like the multifunction button, though controversial to many, the top display screen, the headphone port for checking your audio, are just some of the many features found on the EOS R that sets it apart from the Canon T7i. Now let's talk a little bit about the ease of use and the controls on both cameras for a minute. The T7i as a beginner camera, the front controls are very scant with a lens release button, a flash release and an IR receiver for optional wireless remote being the few that's worth mentioning. You'll find a traditional mode dial with the off on video switch nestled into its side the control dial and the shutter release as well as the three buttons focus point select iso and display are also amongst the few controls worth mentioning moving on to the canon eos r you'll definitely see a more advanced control setup here on this body many of these buttons are customizable to some degree which makes this camera fun to use the menu system on both cameras, I would have to say, are the easiest menu systems to use when compared to the menu system from other camera manufacturers. The T7, however, gets a nod here as it has a beginner's mode to help you navigate through the different options and settings to help users understand what each mode and settings does, which is very useful for someone just starting out. If you should look at the image quality of both cameras, the image processor used inside the EOS R is the Digic 8 and the T7i, the Digic 7 image processor. Of course, as many are aware, pixel power isn't the end all be all of image quality. So the real test is comparing both cameras output side by side. The photos you're seeing were shot using auto mode on both cameras with the standard picture profile setting as well as auto white balance used for both just to keep the comparison as fair as possible. These are the JPEG images you can come to expect coming straight out the box without any adjustment or post-processing. Also, I want to do a quick video comparison using both cameras right now in the studio so you can take a look at the video quality you can come to expect out of both cameras. Right now, what you're looking at is the Canon EOS R filming this video right now using the RF 35mm f1.8 macro lens. Now, so as to get a similar shot, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the Canon T7i. I'm going to throw the 24mm f2.8 lens on it. Then I will compare it back with the Canon EOS R. This time I'm going to be stopping the aperture down to f2.8 so as to get a similar look as the Canon Rebel T7i. So this is the image quality that you can come to expect out of the Canon T7i. We're filming with the standard picture profile, um, shooting at f2.8. And as you can see, the frame is cropped in a little bit. Uh, I was a bit more wider. You could have seen more of my background, my shelves, my, my light stand. You could have seen all of that when I was on the EOS R and that is because of the crop factor that comes with the Rebel T7i. Remember that there's a crop factor of about, I think it's 1.5 or 1.6 on the Rebel series of Canon cameras. So if you're filming with a 24 millimeter, you have to multiply that focal length by whatever the crop factor is of your camera to get the true focal length. All right, so this is it. Let me know what you think. We're gonna switch back to the Canon EOS R. We're gonna shoot at 35 millimeter, which should be a true 35 millimeter focal length. And I'll be shooting at an aperture of 2.8, which is similar to what you're seeing now. All right, so switching right now. All right guys, so this is the Canon EOS R filming with the Canon RF 35 millimeter F1.8. I'm currently shooting at f2.8 so that I can get a similar look as the Rebel T7i so you guys can compare the image quality. 
and see what it is like. So now that you guys have a good look at what the image quality is like coming out of both cameras, let's go back into the rest of the video. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the battery for both camera bodies. The EOS R uses the larger LPE6N battery which is found in the Canon 5D Mark IV. According to Canon, the battery is good for between 330 to 560 shots but I found myself getting close to or even more than a thousand raw images from a full battery almost all the time. For videos, the battery out of the EOS R performs really well. A full charge will give me roughly two and a half close to three hours of use. Now let's just take a look at the lens options for both cameras. The lens options on the T7i are very very vast and wide range as it is capable of using all of Canon's EF mount lenses as well as its dedicated EFS lenses. There are also third party lens options available from the likes of Sigma and Tamron to name a few who makes more budget friendly lenses as other options. For the EOS R, lens options are not as vast as the older EF mount system. The EOS R has the relatively new RF lens mount system and as such does not carry a wider range of lenses as yet. But Canon has announced that it will stop developing new EF lenses and will direct its focus on developing new RF lenses. Already it is expected that Canon will release quite a few new RF lenses sometimes this year to add to its lineup. The RF lenses that have been released so far for the Canon EOS R body are some of the best lenses on the market which produces really sharp and high-end image quality. The drawback to these lenses however is that they are pretty pretty expensive to say the least. However, as a saving grace, Canon has on the market a EF to RF mount adapter which allows users with the EOS R system to be able to mount all EF and EFS lenses from both Canon and other third party manufacturers. So in the grand scheme of things, persons with the R system will be able to use practically all of Canon lenses, whether adapted or native. However, the same is not true for Canon's EF mount cameras like the T7i. Also as a side note, when adapting EFS lenses to the EOS R, it will automatically go into crop mode and will operate similar to Canon's crop sensor cameras like the T7i. Now the part that most of you guys I'm pretty sure are waiting on is the prices on these cameras. Now as of shooting this video in June of 2020, the price on the Canon T7i with the kit lens is going for around 699 US dollars. If you happen to have a lens already and you're just looking for the body then that will cost around 650 US dollars. If you're looking to start creating videos then there is a video creator bundle on Amazon that starts at 750 US dollars which along with the camera body you'll get the kit lens, a shotgun microphone and an SD card to start you off which I think is a pretty sweet deal. For the EOS R the price on the body with the kit lens will run you roughly 2699 US dollars while for the body only you will find it going for roughly 17 to 1800 dollars. There's also an option to get the EF to RF mount adapter with an additional cost of 100 dollars which I would recommend. Now bear in mind there are newer versions to these cameras which Canon have announced that are supposed to be releasing pretty soon and this might cause prices on these cameras to drop. Now just to really wrap up and summarize this video, let's just look at some of the pros, some of the cons of these cameras and also to give you an idea of who I think these cameras are really catered for. So let's start with the pros of the Canon T7i. One, it's lighter, it's cheaper, it has a vast variety of lens options, it is great for beginners whether photo or video, very decent image quality and video quality and the great autofocus. Now the cons for the T7i would have to be that it has only one SD card slot. Even though this is not a deal breaker for most people, 
there are some out there that likes the idea of backing up their files to another SD card so that definitely would have to fall under a con. It has no weather ceiling, limited video and photography features for the more serious enthusiasts, no 4K video though still to date there are not many people who actually shoot in 4K. Now looking quickly at some of the pros for the Canon EOS R, one it has a great build the ergonomics is great, feels great in the hand, great control customization, great autofocus with eye autofocus being an additional feature, very nice EVF, very awesome image quality, video quality, the ability to adapt EF and EF lenses seamlessly with no issues and also if you look closely where the sensor of this camera is, there is a curtain that actually covers the actual sensor which I think is one of the best one of the biggest features of this camera it is so clutch that i really hope other camera manufacturers adopt this feature now if you ask me there's never a perfect perfect camera there's always the aim to find the perfect camera the canon eos r has cons some of the cons are one the single sd card slot it would have been really good if canon added a second card to this body again this is not a con for most people as they're quite fine with using just a single sd card slot i've been fine using it i've never really had an issue with a card failing or anything like that but at the end of the day there are persons who really really like the peace of mind to have their files backed up so again that has to fall under a con second con would be the cropped 4k another con will definitely have to be no hd 1080p video at 120 frames per second this for me was one of the things that held me back when i was first looking at this camera using 60 frames per second is really not that bad so i decided to just go along with it yeah that's really it for the cons not many cons for this canon eos r i've personally been using it for quite some time as i said it's a really really fun camera to use i've been enjoying it so far image quality video quality out of it has been awesome but yeah that's it now just to wrap up this video who are these cameras really for now the eos r in my opinion is more geared towards consumers who are looking to get their first full frame mirrorless camera and appreciates canon's color science also persons who are getting more serious about photography, videography. Also, if you're really excited about the RF lineup of lenses, then starting out with the Canon EOS R to build that lineup of lenses might be a good decision. Now for the Canon T7i, if you're looking to move from cameras on your smartphone and learn about photography and videography, then this is the perfect beginner's camera. It's an easy to use and relatively easy to learn DSLR that will get you going. And there you have it, the comparison between the Canon T7i and the Canon EOS R. Very, very lovely cameras. I've enjoyed using both. I still have both today. I, my Canon T7i is right there on the shelf right there. Every time someone asks what camera do I suggest for someone that's starting out, I tend to recommend the Canon T7i a lot. All right, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate you watching. Please, if you haven't subscribed as yet, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know of some of your experiences. If you have further questions, also leave that in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer them as much as I can. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.